episode film of script discussion season two episode 10 part two now um turns out that marie was right all along about the counting last week <laughs> shockingly <laughs> anyway i really can't count that together, so you're, you're 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 wise not to trust me on that <laughs> anyway um major can count it's amazing yeah um so down I, can't I can't count <laughs> So um, if you're watching this live, you'll notice on the, uh, in the sidebar there where the comments are, uh, you'll find a link for MythMoot 4, which will be taking place June 1st through the 4th of next year. Exciting conference that you should go to. It's going to be awesome. Also, if you are watching this on YouTube later on, you'll notice that there's the same link down below in the, um, in the description, along with other links to other awesome things that you should totally check out. <coughs> so anyway... Um, so, have we settled on our, um, on our teaser at this point? Do we want to yes. have dialogue in it? I feel like we need dialogue. Um, okay. We don't need Fanor to say anything. Fanor can just be walking around doing his thing, being Fanor. And being awesome. But Fingolfin probably needs to say something yeah. to establish what the issue is. <clears throat> what do we think that... It, I mean, I don't, we don't need to write that bit of dialogue just yet, but what do we think the general idea that he's communicating is? Is he just simply complaining about Feanor, or is he basically if just saying there's going to be no living with him at this point? It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, if we want it to be more than that, we can give Fingolfin Fing other things to complain about, mm -hmm. where the Feanor thing is just one of many issues he's currently having. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think last episode we had him and Finarfin talk about how the Moldor are getting a little too into themselves, thinking yeah. they're better than the Vanyar and the Teleri. Could which was maybe a week ago. Yeah. Could Fanor be maybe making a speech and Fing Fingolfin expressing the ideas that he's going to express the Finway later on, that being, I, I, I don't know why, like, like he clearly feels like he can speak for the king, Feanor can at this point. Mm -hmm. um, is yeah. that? I, I guess what I meant is that we could focus on the attitudes and opinions of the rest of the Maldor. Mm -hmm. um, right. Because if Fingolfin is at all out of step with what the rest of the Noldor are saying, that's also probably going to be bugging him. Yeah. So it, that, that's a little bit beyond my older brother is so annoying. And now it's my older brother is so annoying and our people like him better than me and are following his ideas, not my ideas. Right. Right. Which is a bigger picture complaint yeah. than just, oh, he's such a jerk. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we kind of want to tie that in at some point. I don't know if we need to do it from the very beginning of the episode, mm. but at some point it needs to be the people of the Noldor are buying into these ideas that Feanor is espousing. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, go on. One thing that Feanor could be doing other than just giving a speech, he could be working in a uh -huh. workshop type situation where he's making it clear that he won't accept any because you know none of them are good enough for him or something. <laughs> you, you won't accept any what? Apprentices. Apprentices. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah, because he probably has like a line out the door of people wanting to apprentice with him at this point. Yeah. You would think. So. Yeah. I, I was trying to think of what the ce celebrity status of Feanor would do for him, and it would give yeah. him people wanting to learn. You know what? It, and it if kind he's of makes not. Me think it kind of a little bit makes me think of Rocky Three. Follow me for okay. a second. Have you seen Rocky Three? <laughs> I have not seen any Rocky ever. <laughs> Brandon, I know there's a scene Rocky where he runs three? up the steps. Oh, I'm in the here. same boat. It's one of those and movies I know that I've like, been on my it. list for years. Yeah, you, it's they're 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 well worth watching. They're, they're, they're I'm not even I'm like 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 a sports guy, and I think they're well worth watching. Yeah. Again, so, so I have been told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Says the he's never seen The Godfather. I, I get it. All right. So um, 
so what I'm thinking of to, I mean, I'm sure that plenty of people watching this later will know what I'm talking about, but to explain to you what I mean. Everyone who's um, not me <laughs> gets this. <laughs> so Rocky is rich and famous. He is the heavyweight champion in the world. Um, he's getting ready to retire. And just as he's getting ready to retire, some younger, bigger and stronger fighter played by Mr. T mm. um, calls him out in front of the whole world, um, in, including rather salacious um, insults towards Rocky's wife. So mm. when Rocky loses his mind and, res- and rises to the challenge, it's a little bit more understandable. Um, but instead of training hard, he <clears throat> instead of training hard, he's training like um, like it's a circus. Like it's a three ring circus. He has people selling um, what you call it souvenirs mm-hmm. in his um, in his gym that he's working out in. Um, he has, you know, he has people stopping him to, in his training to take pictures with him, mm-hmm. things like that. Like, and it's just this big, gaudy show. And then you cut back to the guy who challenged him, and he's working out really hard in this dark basement place. And he's like, and so it's showing that fame has really gotten, like, Rocky is not really working as hard as he should be that's not that's kind of i'm kind of getting away from from the the point that i'm trying to make here which is that bayon or shop has now become it's not a shop that actually is producing anything of yeah yeah Mm -hmm. right now because his celebrity means that it's more of a of, of a uh, of, I don't know why can't I think um, it's like a tourist attraction mm. right. yeah almost so, and if, if things are being sold there there are things that aren't made by fans right yeah you like people are, are I mean people are buying things from Feyenoord's shop I don't know that the elves have an actual economy here but you know if, yeah, people, we, if we, we show people that. if we show people buying things at Feyenoord's shop we could actually have somebody saying, oh, so this was made by the great craftsman Feyenoord, and they're like, well, it's made right here in his shop. Right, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's the, the look we want there, but... I, uh, I don't know if celebrity status really works for the elves, but yeah, if they have it, Feyenoord is it. Yes. He is the yes. celebrity of the Nolte. Yeah. Yeah. So... So if we're gonna, if, if we can do some muted, toned down version where there's a few hints that it's a celebrity situation, right? I mean, obviously there's no camera flashes because <laughs> we haven't invented that yet. Yeah. But but also, if you think about how Gandalf describes the Palantiri to Pippin, he says like it might even have been made by Feanor. Mm-hmm. Mark on that description. Yeah. Because. Gandalf doesn't really know if Feanor made the one that he's holding or not. Yeah. Which lends itself to that idea of there's things coming out of the shop that were made by elves. But not necessarily. Possibly even elves trained by Feanor. Right. But Feanor himself is maybe not working on things that are for public consumption anymore. Because that was the thing we were supposed to get to is that he's getting a little bit more private and secretive. So right. the stuff that's given to the public is not his anymore. So, or, or it's the fan ran lantern, right? So, okay, if if we have this sort of situation being our teaser, we're actually already starting to introduce the conflict right there, which is fine. I have, you know, the sooner we can introduce the conflict, the better. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise, anything that we're showing outside of that is kind of wasted time. Is there anything? that we want to see in act one aside from the fortune telling scene um by the way i really do want to make go ahead 
the revelation about men, I think, comes much later in the episode. So not that. But Here, here's. I, I was actually going to to suggest the opposite, and I'll tell you why. If oh. we're going, to, we need to get to sword making very quickly. Like we need to have swords. When we didn't do that. Yeah, last episode, didn't we? No, we didn't. I don't think we had. Any didn't think off make No, we've been talking about it. We've been talking about it on the boards for a while. All right, let me look at the. Okay. <laughs> Let me look at that outline. <laughs> I was right. sure we made swords last episode, but I, I could be mistaken. Um, if, because we've been talking about it for for a while, but I don't think yeah, we necessarily. Yeah, that's why I'm confused. Yeah. Um, but uh, what what I would suggest is if we can, if if that hasn't happen what i'm saying is that if we do the revelation of men relatively early on mm -hmm. um it starts to make the making of swords make a whole lot more sense right particularly because from the beginning morgoth is telling them these men they're here to take your place why do you think they well he's not I am... that but Put that Fingolfin made me wrangle in Act Three of the last episode. Okay, because we didn't talk about that at all. I don't think we discussed that scene. Um, I'm actually sort of came up. <laughs> I'm actually with Some you on the idea of because we've talked about Ringle quite a lot, um, and I'm with you on the idea of Ringle not being the first sword ever. If only because there are, I mean, the, the first sword can be made excellently. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the evolution that it would take to get to a sword that would actually be used in battle. Um, <coughs> right. At, at that point, like there's going to be an, yeah. there's, there's no way there's not an evolution in weapon types from the, from the exile of the Noldor to the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. There's 0% chance yeah, there's, that there's no evolution of weaponry and armor. Yeah, and arms race stuff going on. It just, there has to be. Um, the reason why swords were supposed to be made last episode was because that was the, let's all go back to Middle Earth and be prepared to have realms discussion started there. Um, so that's why I put it in the outline, I think. Um, but, if we wanted to save the sword making for this episode, we could. Yeah, okay. um, we don't have to put it on screen. My, my, my confusion is probably coming from this. Because, well, first thing, if we make Fingolfin our, our um, protagonist here, I feel like it really does, it really has a lot of power for him to make a sword rather early on in the episode mm -hmm. and, ha and Feanor see it and decide that he needs to make a better one. And that's the, mm -hmm. the sword that he draws on Fingolfin because Fingolfin has, he's clearly had no intention of actually using the sword against the elves. Right. Like that's not on his mind. Um, yeah. But the um, go on. But the, then, but then you don't want the implication to be that he's making it to fight men either. Like it was supposed to be swords were being developed to fight those evil monsters over in Middle Earth, mm. which was a discussion from last last episode. Right, but as as we as we've discussed quite a f as we've discussed at length, that I don't feel like a a sword is a particularly useful weapon. Not for hunting, only for intelligence monsters. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. I mean, we can we can do that. Um, I just think that we should we should definitely see. Feanor forging his weapon in this in this episode. Yeah. 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 Um. 
you were saying? Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I, I will, we'll see how it turns out as far as the timing goes. Okay. Um, here, here's the thing. I, I also really like the idea of Melkor being involved in the forging of Fingolfin's first sword. However, what I think is really interesting about this is if we did do it in episode nine, where mm -hmm. Feanor is refusing Melkor's assistance, mm -hmm. Fingolfin accepts his assistance, or his advice anyway. Yeah, that was the idea, was to have Melkor at least be a little bit involved in the sword making. Okay. All right, so we can, we can do that. Um, but we should definitely see in this episode, <coughs> we should see that there, there has been an expansion. It's not just one guy made a sword. There's like armories now. Things it, are being stockpiled and yeah, right, it's right. getting a little bit more dangerous. <laughs> right. Um, <coughs> so what, what else do we need in act one then? Because I mean, we're talking about like a a ten to twelve minute period of time here. Right. The the do we, um, need, do we need more of Melkor's talking to the Noldor about certain things? You know, well, we're we're example. definitely getting that in Act One. Yeah. Um, what what, the, what do we what exactly do we want him to say? You know, the the fortune telling scene is for him to tell Fingolfin that he will be king of the Noldor someday. Right. Mm -hmm. For him to tell Turgon, guard well your daughter. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And it's something else totally incidental that turns out to be true, just right. for the fun of it. Uh, so we do get to make up some things he could be saying. Right. Yes. There. Yeah. Um, <coughs> This is, by the way, this, this is going to be the last scene in Act 1, I think, because mm -hmm. that our act break is mm -hmm. going to be Karen Thier going off to tell dear old dad what's happened. Right. Which yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously Karen Thier should be there. Um, right. Is, is he going so to... Do we want do we Melkor to try to tell Karen Thier something? About his own? Future before we get to the Fingolfin reveal. I don't necessarily think that we. I mean, I guess it would kind of call his attention. Well, because we don't really know Karen Thier, so so Melkor could say Karen Thier, son of Feanor, mm -hmm. which which will introduce the character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Or at least re reintroduce him. So I guess we should yeah. have him address him, which is a good idea. Should Karen should Melkor like offer to tell Karen Thier's fortune and Karen Thier wants nothing to do with it? Like I, I don't oh, care yeah, what you have like to say that. or I'm not interested. I like that because because he's fan or something. <laughs> then we don't like... have to make up something stupid for Melkor to say about him. But at the same time, it emphasizes the disdain that the House of Feanor has for Melkor. They think Melkor is a has been. Right. He's a charlatan. He's, he's washed up. He's powerless. Yeah. He's, yeah. Right. So yeah. having him. And also, if there's one thing Karen Thayer's good at, it's expressing disdain. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I like it. He's the proudest. He's the yeah. proudest of the Vanorians, and Vanorians are the proudest of the Noldor, and the Noldor are the proudest of the Elves. Like he is yeah. the pinnacle of someone who is way too conceited and full of himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Which is interesting because he's not exactly the greatest of the Vanorians either. <laughs> No. Well, he's the like Feanor, Feanor is certainly the proudest of the proud, but Feanor at least has a good reason. <laughs> yeah. And All Karen Thier does is cause problems. Because he has no charisma. Right, Karen Thier's right. not really all that much worse than his brothers. Like, I know he's, no. like, the hosts were right to call him out as the worst of the bunch. Yeah. But the reason he's the worst of the bunch is because he doesn't know how to sugarcoat it at all. Right. So they all think that about the rest of the world, but the rest of them at least know how to do the whole diplomacy thing. Yeah, yeah. Karen there's the one who's like, screw diplomacy, I'm going to say whatever I think. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, Karen, you're not again. <laughs> um, okay. So, so, so what else? Okay, so see? Karen there's disdainful. 
so what else do we want to see in Act One before that? Um, before we even get to the Melkor fortune teller scene, which right. we will figure out when we come back from the break. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube Live, we'll be back in a minute or two. I'm probably going to want to take a bite of this delicious burrito that has appeared yeah, before. You um, if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, definitely like and share the videos if you like and want to share them. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe and check out the links below, especially the one for Myth Moot 4, taking place June 1st to the 4th next year. See you in a minute.